Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I don't know if you have seen or heard that uh, why is that karate is similar to Wing Chun? As I shared in my previous videos here, I talked about my background was actually also learning Wing Chun. And at the end of the, of the day, I appreciate learning karate over Wing Chun. Part of the reason is because karate provides you the essence of being strong, right? I mean, as much as I love the, the sticky hand, um, it, it was just not my taste. And I'm going to show you why. Uh, but today I want to share one of our kata, which is the Nahanchi kata, right? You have, you have Nahanchi Ichi, uh, Nahanchi Sho, Ni, and Nahanchi Sandan. Uh, and it, it all has the flavor of Wing Chun in there. And so when I practiced this kata, I was thinking, oh, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, it, uh, it has the Wing Chun element. And so I have a lot of uh, you who have been commenting on my videos of, you know, why is that you incorporating uh, Wing Chun into, uh, into these techniques. Look, like I said, at the end of the day, as much as you want to say, you know, this style, that style, if we are going to get into a real fight, um, take a look at it. Uh, try to, try to com compile as much as uh, 10 fights. Uh, you just can't tell what style they're learning because once you're fighting already, you just swing for the fence. But today I'm going to focus on uh, Shorin Ryu, then a Hanchi Kata, and Wing Chun. Okay, so I'm gonna do the Nahanji Kata first. First, I'm gonna do slow, so Nahanji Shodan. Let's focus on Shodan today. Yoi, Ichi, Hai, Chimber, Ai. So slow, one, two, Ai, 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 so, Ai, so, Ai, 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 so, Ai. Yeah, so that's the Nahanji Kata, yeah? Um, for those of you who kind of wonder why is that I, I don't stomp, I just do that. I have uh, plenty of reasons why I don't stomp. And for those of you who like to practice stomping, if that's what you like, good for you, for me. I don't do that because, uh, look, when it comes to Nahanchi Kata, right, and especially when you're going to do it full speed, do it on the beach like back in the old days, like for these grandmasters. Stomping is okay because you just stomp on sand. Right? I have seen people here who stomps on their dojo floor, wooden dojo floor, and I'm amazed because I used to do that. I used to, to stomp you know, on these wooden floors. Uh, but then after a couple of years, I was, I was like, uh, really, it serves no purpose. Uh, the, the, the only people that you actually make richer are the orthopedic surgeon, because a lot of my friends actually uh, went to other, orthopedic surgeon either to get their knees replaced or their ankle being fixed, right? So why do something that makes no sense, right? So instead, now we do the glide. And the glide here is actually understanding how to transfer your body. So as you can see, when I do this, I don't move like that. I'm here, but my, see how my center line stays the same, right? So this can translate to either, either uh, in Win Chun, come on, Kevin. Okay, into, uh, into Zenkutsudachi. Yeah, so in Win Chun, we do this way here. Right, in order to trap his legs, right? So this is solid. So if I go like this here, if he moves, if he moves forward, move forward, see, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning toward him too. See, I'm trapping him in. And if he moves backwards, I'm backwards with him, all right? So that's the reason why we do this. I think it makes more sense than stomping, right? But now if, if you wanna talk about stomping, stomping is not hard. You just go here, side, here, side. It's not hard. So why train something? That's really not that hard to do, but yet you're pounding on the floor, which really serves no purpose but making the doctors rich. I mean, for those doctors who are watching this video, they will say, hey, Len, don't say that stuff. We, we need more patients. But that's a different story. It's just a side joke. Okay, so now Nahanchi uh, with faster speed. Okay, now we're gonna put it into applications and see how Wing Chun fits into this. So the first 
part of the kata side block, elbow, pa, uh, fist, square. So Kevin over here. All right. Let's uh, this side. This side is better. So from here, I said if you fighting position, right? Remember, we are engaged in, in, a, in a fight, so therefore it's fighting position. He's gonna punch with that arm, right? I wanna go right in here, right away, right? The block, so some style does this kind of block, right? Also, let's be honest with ourselves, right? If we get into a real fight, uh, one of my previous videos, I talked about uh, the eight different types of block is pretty much if he punch in, he punches, I'm gonna punch straight to the face, I'm just gonna paw, uh, 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 right? Just uh, pairing. So now let's say if he hit again, inside, right? Inside, inside, see, inside. If you are going to do this here, this only looks good when you practice kata. But really, in real life, you try to do this in real life, it's just so hard. Right? So that's why in our kata, we don't do this. We just go straight out like that. Right? So if he punches, now application slow, punches block. You see how his hand right there, he's going to punch me too. So I want to avoid to the side by go this with palm. See? So come up. I turn. Yeah. So come punching, block, palm. Right? And then so the kata, out, palm. And what's the next move? This, strike. So if he goes, one, palm. Right here, bam, grab head down, and boom. Just like the kata, right? One, two, three, four, right? Symmetry, one, two, three, four, right? How is that similar to Wing Chun? It comes in, Wing Chun, right? So this is the Wing Chun stance, right? So Wing Chun, so for me, he just do a regular fighting stance. You don't have to do a Wing Chun stance. So he punches me, so he Wing Chun. Same, right? So same as that, isn't it? So side, front, who cares, right? As long as you're blocking. So he comes, block, right? Once block, I turn, break, see? Turn, break. So Wing Chun, they do these. They do the elbow in, right? So they don't do like in, uh, in uh, karate where we elbow like that. They go in this way, right? In this way, right? So again, I'm just trying to uh, uh, show the resemblance of Nahan Chi and Wing Chun. Uh, for any of you who are Wing Chun true practitioners, um, you know, this, obviously this, this is not uh, a Wing Chun form, right? I'm just trying to see the similarities, but if you have any comments uh, below, uh, what do you think about the similarities, stuff like that, I would appreciate your comment, right? So you go again, so you go. And punch, one, see here, down, head down, okay, head down. And then same, I can go this way out here, bum, and then down, okay? So I can go Wing Chun, go out, down, bum, down, okay? So same, out, bum, out, down, just like the kata. So uh, the second part, the kata, so after you hear is, one, two, three, okay? One, two, three. So same, this is fighting. This is the uh, Okinawa way, the other way. So, so let's punch with this hand. So if he punches, one, see? One, so here, and then next one is two. One, turn to the side, two, break. Ah, break. Once it's broken already, then push this out, push this out, and bam, right? So we go one, two, three, come. We go one, break it, break it, and out, three. Okay, so again, one, two, three. Okay, so if you have been following my videos, um, I don't believe in, 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 in locking, and I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about that in the next video. But today I would just wanna focus in attacking. Karate is about attacking, right? It's empty fist. So use your fist, use what you are known for. Karate people, we are known for fist. We are not known for the other stuff. 
and this is the reason why, and I'm going to have a separate uh, video about uh, how traditional karate is dying, is because we are trying to teach things that is not within our uh, realm, right? You want to teach what you know and stop uh, incorporating other stuff because we've been seeing so much stuff in MMA and all this and that, and, uh, and, and you just try to fit in. Don't do that. This is what is going to cause traditional karate to just be extinct, okay? So the last sequence after one, two, and three, the last sequence is one, two, and three, right? Always make it to a combination. So opponent comes in, right? If he's going to punch here, so hey, block. See how I block? One, this, cut that, one, and here. Do one trap in, two, right? One, two. So one, two, right, and then three. So we go one, two, and here, bam, three, okay? So we go one, two, bam, three, okay? In Wing Chun, it's like this, and he goes in, one, right, trap, the trap hand, in, and then three, right? So go in. So one, two, three. Oh, one, right here. Trap hand, two, and then three. Right, so it's three. Okay. So that's basically Nahanchi Kata on how it resembles with uh, Wing Chun, right? Because uh, it has been known and um, a lot of in the literature that you probably read or heard that Nahanchi is designed to be in a close fighting uh, combat, right? And uh, like I said in my previous videos as well, there are no secrets in these things, right? If you are creative enough, you can create anything, but just stick to what you are good at, right? For karate people, we are good at with our hands, uh, so let's concentrate with our hands. But everything that we do with our hands and legs, it has to make sense. It has to be aligned and it has to create that kind of power, right? So if he's here, if he punches me, right? You don't just don't wanna you know, leave your hand and punch like that. When, I, when I'm doing something like this here, I am engaging my body, right? And uh, just watch my previous videos on how I talk about uh, how to use your hip in order to generate power. When I do this here, actually my, my, my lats is expanded and my, my hip is, um, is going this forward direction and my toes are gripping the ground, right? In order for me to create power, I have to do this grip the ground, right? And I have to take him away from the center, right? If I don't take him away from the center and, and he's solid like that, he's going to punch me. So always take him away from the center. And how do you take him away from the center? You have to be stronger than him, right? There are two types of people in this world who's, who, can, who can defeat you. Number one is that they have to be stronger, or number two, they have to be skillful, right? So if, if, uh, if I'm gonna, going to have someone who's like 110 pounds, okay, and I'm going to fight with a person who, who is like, let's say, 200 pounds, right, and doesn't even know karate, but if that person is so strong, I don't know, it, it might give my 110 pound um, person problems, right? Um, so you have to understand uh, how to break the body mechanics, right? You have to be that skill in order for you to neutralize your opponent, right? So we don't just do moves blindly. We have to do them with a concept uh, behind it that, that these moves are for me to, to neutralize him to make him off balance, right? So when we practice our kata, uh, we have to be cognizant of how we do it and just don't go through the motions. You know, I, I have this saying that I tell people, it's not about how much you do, it's about how hard or how effective you're doing it, okay? And uh, at the end of the, the day, when you do it right, then you enjoy what you learn. Uh, but if you do it wrong, you know, give it a month or two and you're gonna give up. Right? So if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and I have these additional videos here. Check it out, and I'll see you in the next video.